The week before traveling to India, I was completely scared, petrified. I was having nightmares in the night. I could not sleep well. Meet Sara. She's from Spain and has been living in India for eight years. Together with her husband, a former street boy, they founded a cafe in Mumbai run only by former street children. During our chat, Sara shared her initial prejudices about India before arriving there, discussed why Europe lacks the strong sense of family compared to India, and explained how the lives of street children are transformed through their cafe. I'm Max. Let's dive in. What did you know about India? What was your expectations about the place before moving here and how it changed? The first time I came here to India, it was in 2012 and I uh -huh. came uh, as a tourist. <clears throat> so, And I never thought of coming to India. I was uh, sharing an apartment with friends. I was 24 years old in that moment. And they told me, Sarah, would you like to go for a trip and mm. travel India for three weeks? And I thought, oh, okay. I've never thought about it, but let's go. So I didn't have any idea what was the country about. Okay. okay. And then many of my friends and many of my relatives were saying, Sara, you know where you are going. India is not an easy country. There is a lot of corruption. There is a lot of um, sexual aggression as well, rapes, all of that. So I was getting scared. And then I remember that the week before traveling to India, I was completely scared, petrified. I was having nightmares in the night. I could not sleep well. So then when I took the trip, I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> but when I arrived, I mean, the country was so different, you mm. know, so different that um, I didn't have any expectations. But then I got to know that, OK, it's a place that I want to know more about it yeah. because it's something I could not even imagine, you know, the kind of structure, cities, cultures religion, it was out of my mind. What happened later, like when I went back to Spain, I wanted to process, but I was hungry of knowing more about the country. Mm. So I was not having expectations of, I want to come here and work and make a family, which happened, uh, that was throughout the years. Mm. But I was having the hunger of knowing more and I want to do something for the country because there are some areas in which you can also help, right? I was thinking I will come here and I want to volunteer and I want to help in some way. When I came the second time, it was as a tourist also, I realized that you come here as a volunteer, but then you are not helping anyone. You are mm. helping yourself mm. to understand that country, to understand that culture, to understand what's happening in the world, you know? Because yeah. you come here, you do some work, which they can do with or without you, and then you leave. This place will continue doing whatever they have been doing. Yeah. But the changes in yourself, in your mentality. So that was my biggest learning. What was the change, the biggest change with you? For me, it was more about how uh, people is happy with very simple things, mm. you know? So someone comes to your home, they will open the house for you. They will make you feel very comfortable. They will die for you. In Europe, that is not happening. I mean, if someone comes home, they will serve you water and that's it. Mm. Here, maybe they don't have money, but if you are going to their home, <clears throat> they will make sure that they are bringing you chicken, which is something that is very expensive for them, but they want to make you feel comfortable. Mm. You know? And just the joy of having you in their place, that is what it matters for them. And I think that these values we are missing. And something that I also like a lot from here is that um, it's like they have a community that is very strong and they will help each other. And over there, it's more difficult. I mean, if someone here, for example, now with my family, okay, mm. I have a baby. I can come here to the cafe. I just leave my baby with any one of the boys and the girls of the cafe. And they are happy to take care of the baby. They will <laughs> never say no. You know, over there, it's like, okay, one hour, that's it. <laughs> you know, so this kind of warmness and community, I mean, it's simple things of life. It's more about feelings. It's more about connecting to each other. And over there, we are starting to miss that. Mm. So here, as long as this is fixed, maybe they can sleep in a very small house, which is the size of your car, but they will be happy because they have that, that connection. They have that family building sense, mm. which over there, unless you don't have a big house and you have your room for your child and your food every day, Maybe even you have all of this, you are not happy. Mm. With a small thing, we get depression. And here, with a small thing that you give, they get very happy. So that was my biggest takeaway, I could say. Yeah. And I wanted to experience more, and I wanted to shift my mind. So then, not only about this, 
I also thought that, okay, I am a good teacher, I can come here, I can go to teach not only children, but other teachers as well. But then that was like one of my expectations to come here, experience the country, understand the country, but also give back to the community. But then I realized that I was learning much more than me teaching to each other, to the mm. others, you know. What would, would be your advice to someone who wants to move to India or like try India to work here, maybe to do business? Like let's say for the Westerner, like someone from Europe. I think that it's essential that first they come and they experience India because it's not an easy country. I mean, now even though I'm talking about all the good things, traffic is difficult. So maybe you can get a second traffic for half an hour, one hour or two hours for just doing three kilometers, you know? So if I want to go from here, to my home, if I go at 7 in the morning, I take 10 minutes. If I go at 12 p.m., I can take one hour. So that is the difference because the traffic is so much, no? So it limits you. It limits you a lot because if you want to go out with friends or if you want to go and for shopping or do basic stuff, the traffic will limit your life. So I think it's very important that they come here, they experience it. They also, the way of working with people is different, you know, the way of understanding each other is different. What's the difference? Collaborative work, especially. Mm -hmm. So at times they can collaborate well, but at times they can be very individualistic. I mean, they can just work on their own. And if you need help, unless you don't go there and ask them like every single detail, you might not be understanding. What's the biggest reward people can get if they actually settle in India and like the place? It's a place that it's, you have lots of fun. I mean, all the culture, all the festivals that you have here. It's a place that, for example, in August, you start with the Ganesha. And we say that we put the lights, the, the Christmas and the street lights in August because of Ganesha, and they remove them in December after Christmas because there is festival after festival, mm. you know? And it's so much life. It, they are very, very alive. They can be outside, there is like a big crowd of people dancing with like music. And every festival is so different and unique that you have lots of fun. Let's talk about your cafe, this project. It's, yes. like, it's super interesting, I like research a lot about it. So the thing is that yeah. I came here to Bombay basically because um, I wanted to have a change of life. Okay, I was in Spain and I was like a little bit um, feeling that it was my life was kind of monotonous, you know, it was, uh, I was doing always the same thing. And India was a country that I really had a lot of interest. And then suddenly I got into my hands, my ha the one who's my husband right now, but I mean, Sheikh book. Yeah. And this book was about my husband, life. He used to be a street child. So when he was five years old, he ran away from home and he lived for three years on the streets. Then he went to an orphanage and I will not explain the whole life right now because I will stay one hour. Yeah. But basically because he was a street child and he got people who got, gave him opportunities, he wanted to give back to the society and he wrote a book. And with the proceeds of the book, he built this cafe. This cafe is a cafe that is uh, giving employment and education and housing to former street boys and girls who, like my husband, they were living in the streets when they were children. Living on the streets, so you literally, you're homeless. There are some children that the family was in the street already and yeah. they were born in the street. There are many children that here in India, they born in the street, live in the street and they die in the street because they don't have a home. Other children, they run away from their places because the life with their family is hard which is the case of my husband. So when he was five, when he was three, he started working already in a bakery. And he was going to factory to factory to provide, to give chai to all the employees. So imagine uh, a three years old children. Wow. Three years old child. He was working already. Oh he was God. deprived of play. So then when he was five, he was working in a, in a tea shop and he was cleaning all of the glasses because he was having a small thing, so it was easy for him. And then he had to bring the chai to one factory and he wanted to play. And he was playing while he was having all the chais in one basket. And then he fall, all the grass, all the glasses they broke. And then he was scared. He knew that if he was going back home, he was going to be beaten by his family. Oh. If he was going back to the tea shop, he was going to be beaten by his boss. So he didn't know what to do. And he started running away. <clears throat> And he ran away until uh, one train station, and then he started living there because he was so scared of coming back home. When he was like five, six? Five years. Five years old. Wow. And he lived in the street for three years. Wow. So it was very hard to live in the street because everything happened to children. 
però, I mean, they start learning how to pick food from the garbage, pick up food from the garbage, or to work, like singing songs to get some money, or begging, or uh, polishing uh, shoes as well. I mean, they do different kind of jobs. And it's hard because they are small children. But apart from that, they are starving. They don't have like a nice place to live. And then because of they are sleeping in the train station, anything can happen. They can come, they can feed you, they can make you, they can push you to, uh, to take drugs, or they can rape you as well, which was the case of my husband. He went through all of this when he was five in the street, living in a train station. He told me that the first six months that he was living in the street, it was like a hell, because he didn't understand what was happening and why this, all of these things were happening to him. But after those six months, he learned how to protect himself, and then he could be like a criminal also. He could throw stones, and if he had to kill someone, he, he never did, but he was ready to do it, you know, to protect himself. So the life in the city is very, very hard. And that's why, when he was eight, someone came from an orphanage, which is called Sneha Sadan, and then they took him to the orphanage. When he went to the orphanage, all his life changed because he was protected, he was taken care of, he was loved, he was not pushed to go and work. It was like a big family. In that orphanage, they had 400 children. So they have different houses around Bombay, and in each house there were about 20 children. But the thing is that uh, they sent you to school, and I mean, my husband, he was not good at studies. I mean, he, he could not process, and he was always being sent for doing like course of the school, cleaning, washing, and all these kind of things. So then when he became 18, obviously he was not good at uh, studies and in the school, so he was doing jobs like uh, driving rickshaws or cleaning um, cars and all of that. And he got the opportunity to go and work as a man Friday, which means someone who can clean, drive, cook, whatever, mm. in an artist's home. This artist was Justice Fernandez which was a very famous artist of Bombay. He started working for him and he was living in the same place as him. Because of that, he started knowing people from all around the world because he was, this artist was always welcoming people from all around the world, but especially from Barcelona. And then his boss gave him as a present a trip to Barcelona and they went together. Oh, wow. And it was because of this trip that he started this cafe. When he went to Barcelona, the first thing that he realized that there were no families living in the street. And he was saying, how can this be possible? There are two different cities. Here in India, he was saying, it's a place that it is known by this spiritual, spirituality, but they are so disconnected from the reality because there are so many people living in the streets and they're not helping to each other. They are not fighting for having like a place where everybody can have a home. But then in Barcelona, there were no children in the street. There were families, no, there were no families in the street. Maybe there would be some beggars, but like single people. Mm. But there were not a single children in the street. Mm. He said, and then this made him believe that he wanted to do something to change a society here in Bombay. And then is when he came with the idea of writing a book about his life. And by selling the book with the proceeds, he started this cafe. This is our main message. We want everybody to feel welcome at the cafe because uh, we don't want to make any difference, either if they are from different religions, from different or sexual orientations, or um, from different castes. Everyone is welcome. So in this cafe, you like your staff, that's they all from the streets? Or? They are basically from the same orphanage that I'm in Griwa, Sneha uh, Sadan, most yeah. of them. And then there are some that they are coming from slums. Amin knows me, the founder of this cafe, since I was a child, four years. So he has seen me grown up, like how I grown up. After leaving orphanage, I meet him. And then he said, Kushbu, you have a lovely design. You have a lovely creation and all. Why are you working for others? I said, what I can do? I don't have options. I have no my own shops and all. So how I can work for myself? So he said, OK. So that time, the cafe was not exist. But he showed me one dream that this is what I am going to do in the future. If you are ready to welcome, and then afterwards we started selling books in Traffic Signal, wherever we get the chance and all. And first time I saw, Amin was begging for us because his word when it comes out, it is very powerful. Like usually he don't say for say because people sometimes they come and they just say, okay, I'm going to do for you this and that. And 
in a minute they forget but he has back for us to make my dream reality make other people other children dream reality what they want to become right now i can talk in front of you if you have seen me 5 years or 6 years back i was a person i cannot talk in front of anyone very shy if he introduced with anybody i used to cry so now what cafe has given me confident identity and be who you are not what i like you know they wants me to make what's the three best things for you about living in india family that is the first one then profession i have grew up a lot as a teacher and there was something that i could never imagine and then um this our cafe because it's uh, it is helping me to be always humble and that's the ground and make me remember that i am so lucky to be Uh, to have grown where I have grown and to be born where I was in Europe, that we had all the facilities, and then here is like every day slapping my face and saying, "Be proud and be um, grateful to what you have." If you want to hear more stories of inspirational, fun, and impactful people, watch the next video. I promise you will enjoy it. No, seriously, you will.